Я разделенная внутри на то, что у меня семья осталась в другом городе, и здесь моя семья тоже. Я хочу сказать одну вещь. Чужих детей не бывает. Убивают моих сыновей, убивают ваших сыновей. Переспали ночь в Харькове, и на следующее утро нам во двор упала ракета. Мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. In Ukraine's Donbass region. Putin must pay the price. To protect uh, myself, my family. I'm in my house. I was not going out and I'm not going to. Lots of Ukraine refugees, a lot of kids. I'm doing this to give people some, some hope. The full-scale invasion that intelligence officials had been warning about for weeks is now underway. Russian troops continue their invasion of Ukraine. Nearly 24 hours since Russia launched a full-scale attack by land, air and sea. We will agree a massive package of economic sanctions. And Putin must pay the price. If we try to take our country, our freedom, our lives, the lives of our children, Мы будем защищаться. On February 24, 2022, Russia began its invasion on Ukraine. And as horrifying as that is, the story for me started a bit earlier. So now that I'm coming, I guess you can start asking maybe your friends, you know, if you can find people. Um, I guess I'm coming on the 25th, so I'm gonna be there 25 at night. I mean, at your city. So if you're gonna come in 25 at Six. We're gonna meet in the evening. And um, yeah, also maybe talk with somebody that can give me to the border. Okay, I'm gonna search later who's gonna help you to go to the borders. When Russia started amassing more than 100,000 troops on Ukraine's border, I immediately started planning a trip to the country to document what was going on on the ground. But no one could really prepare me or the world for what was about to happen. As you can imagine, my initial trip to Ukraine was cancelled. Being at home watching everything unfold in the news while talking to my Ukrainian friends that were trying to flee, I felt helpless. I couldn't sit back anymore and do nothing. I knew I had to do something. And then it hit me. More than half a million people have now fled Ukraine. Around 660,000 Ukrainians have so far fled to neighboring countries. The UN says more than 2.8 million people have now fled Ukraine. The refugee crisis is getting worse by the day, which means it's likely to be a long time before any of these people truly find some peace. You see, no matter the lines we try to draw on the map, no matter the geopolitical analysis we do, what never changes, what always stays the same, is people are the ones that suffer. And while it is important to do our own research to understand whether it's Putin's fault or Russia's fault or NATO's fault, at the end of the day, none of that really matters. At the end of the day, this is a humanitarian issue. And that's what I want to see and document with my own eyes. That's what brought me to Budapest. Hello guys, Tash here and welcome back to yet another video coming to you from Budapest, Hungary and more specifically its main train station. Most people that were forced to leave Ukraine come to Hungary are accessing the city of Budapest through this very station, sometimes even finding shelter here. And while most are trying to get as far away from Ukraine as possible with a hope to soon return to their homes, I'm going to hop on a train and head directly to the border to see how the situation is on the ground and hopefully hear the story through the people that are living it. It goes without saying that this is gonna be extremely interesting, so stay with me. The first stop of my journey was Ahoni, the main border crossing between Ukraine and Hungary. 
So guys, we're currently inside Zahoni train station, a place that would normally not be as crowded, but we're definitely not living through normal times. According to the latest information, more than 100,000 people that have fled Ukraine have come here in Hungary, many times having left family members behind. Most people here are either waiting for their loved ones to cross from Ukraine and come here in Hungary, or they've crossed themselves and are waiting to take a train to Budapest, the capital of Hungary. And then of course, most of them have plans to go from Budapest, you know, further inside Europe. In this particular border crossing, there's many people escaping the war that are non-Ukrainian citizens. One of them is Pank Shapan, an Indian student who left Kharkiv, one of the cities near the Russian border that were hit the most when the invasion started. How long did it take you from Kharkiv to here? It's two days for me. Two days? Yeah. And March 1st I took night flight train and I left at like early morning today. And what's your plan after the year? What are you gonna do? I'm just back here. Yeah, I'm just planning to go back to my country. Yeah. yeah. Then the situation is normal. It's Ukraine. I sure I'll be there. You'll be back. It's my second home. Thankfully, for every person like Pankshapan, there's a person like Thomas that's helping them figure things out once they arrive here. Why did you decide to come here? Because I want to help people, you know. It's a war situation and uh, especially here there's a lot of uh, refugee, refugees who are not Ukrainian. For example, they are Nigerian, they are Indians. So they really don't know what's the situation, you know. And I try to help them. And as well the other refugees who don't want to, uh, you know, feel the war. While at the border, I also met Thomas, a freelance journalist that was corresponding for CNN and had just arrived from Poland. So you came from Poland to here? Yeah, I flew right to Poland. I went to the America, the border between Ukraine and Poland. I spent like four days there, between the train station, the border, trying to catch a really nice histories. Because even in the situation like this, you can find a are really emotional stories to are really good to to show to the people. How do you feel covering this story? How do you feel doing it? It's a strong, it's a really mix of the feelings. Sometimes you you feel good because you can help the people to catch the family, to remitting, but at the end of the day you went to the bed and you remember you're in the war. And it's a mix of feelings. After talking to Thomas, I was fascinated by his stories from the Polish border. And so I decided to head to Poland myself to search, witness and capture more moments like the ones I had just experienced in Hungary. Or so I thought. And just like that, I've made it to the Polish side of the border with Ukraine, more specifically at the border crossing that's called Medica. This is the main crossing point that Ukrainians use to flee from their country. And according to the latest information that we have from the United Nations, more or less five times more people are choosing Poland and this specific border to flee from Ukraine compared to their neighboring countries. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because Poland serves a much longer border with Ukraine. So there are multiple border crossings just like this one. And compared to the Hungarian border that was a couple days ago, there seems to be much more action. But the question remains, what happens on the other side of the border? And yes, you guessed it right. I was just about to cross into Ukraine. But before I did that, I had the chance to talk to this Ukrainian girl that had just arrived to Poland. I don't recall her name, but I do recall her story. So what's your plan after here? Where are you going to go? Uh, I'm going to go with my friends to Germany and uh, stay here. Uh, I don't uh, know how long it will be. Uh, I think uh, uh, maybe mock weekly. So how do you feel being here? I don't know what I feel now. Honestly, I feel tired because uh, the road was yeah. uh, very uh, long 
uh, we go by car and after they eat on food and it was very tight. Uh, I feel tight, I'd tired. like to sleep, uh, I'd like to eat normal and yes. uh, wash up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's all I want right now. It was time to get on the other side of this board and try to learn more about this crisis. But moments after an intense border crossing to Ukraine, this happened. So we're literally two kilometers, you know, further from the border crossing, two kilometers into Ukraine. And it's crazy what's going on. The people that are trying to flee, that head towards the border, towards Poland, have taken up both lanes. And uh, we're kind of stuck. Two hours later, I made it to Lviv, the city most Ukrainians head to before leaving the country. And soon enough, the reality I was confronted with was intense. Thankfully, we had David, who brought his piano all the way from Germany, trying to comfort the souls of the people waiting to get a ticket. Okay. Why are you doing this? Okay, my name is David Martello. I come from Germany. I played the day be days before in the Polish-Ukrainian border. And now I'm here to see how the situation is and uh, to give the people a little bit of hope and yeah, I feel that people are very nervous, but also very full of, like, hopeful. What is your name and uh, where you come from? Um, my name is Nelia. Um, I'm, I live in Lviv. So, how have you seen Lviv change before and after the war? Um, you know, um, I want to say I want. I'm very proud of my people because um, all people united uh, for purpose and help each other. And you see now a lot of refugees here and. We're trying to do our best to make the food, to make the shelters, to make what we can do for the people. So like, is, is all your family living here in Lviv? No, my, my son, I live here with my son and my mom, um, unfortunately, she stays in the north of Ukraine, in Chernigiv. And uh, last night was, was a horrible night for her and she, thanks God, she survived and uh, it's not a possibility to move out there for now. After wishing Leia and her mom good luck, I made my way to this university where locals were making masking nets in order to help the Ukrainian military. This is Ira, one of the coordinators here, and this is what she had to say about contributing in this way. 
you know, the first day when I was really at home and trying to help like other volunteers posting at the internet, checking the news every second, it was really stressful. But for now, when I'm here, I'm doing something with my hands. I saw the result. I understand that all of these people here, they are like, there is the, the place for them to be like peaceful for some time because they are not checking their emails, their phones for every second. So they have a time like to, to speak with someone, to find new friends probably, to help someone, like not be stressful every minute of, of your day. And even for me, then I come home, I saw the news and you know, like it was like something was really bad, but now it's okay. And you were like, okay, like our guys is great there. They are, uh, they are protecting us and uh, at the end of the day you like see the result of the whole day and it's like easier to understand everything what's going on. We're slowly coming to the reason I want to travel into Ukraine and make this video in the first place. But before I tell you what that is and how we, you and me can make that happen, I want you to first listen to the stories of these women I met in Lviv and felt compelled to share their story, having left their homes only days ago. Все, все 11 дней я находилась в Гостомеле. Гостомель был одной из самых больших точек и сейчас продолжает быть, где бомбят, где происходит война, стреляют в мирных жителей. Я это все видела, я тот человек, который на это смотрел. И каждый раз, когда бомбили, мы убегали в подвал и жили просто без света, без воды. Единственное, что в, нашей, в нашем доме было, это был газ. Сейчас я нахожусь во Львове у своих друзей, и, но это временное пристанище, потому что ну, у них есть своя жизнь, и мы понимаем, что мы, мы должны сейчас свою жизнь выстраивать по-другому. Я разделенная внутри на то, что у меня семья осталась в другом городе, и здесь моя семья тоже. И сейчас от каждого шага любого человека зависит все будущее вообще нашей страны, и не только нашей страны, а всего мира. Конкретно сейчас обеспечить себя жильем, деньги, которые есть, они в любом случае закончатся. И сейчас конкретно мы находимся в ситуации принятия решения, что нам делать дальше. Я обращаюсь сейчас тогда через вас, через эту возможность, к тем людям, которые слышат меня, которые меня знают лично, которые понимают или не понимают, что происходит сейчас. В нашей стране война, в Украине бомбят, умирают люди, умирают дети. Я лично на своей машине смогла вывести две семьи, просто потому что я очень хотела выжить, и мы под бомбами просто выезжали из Гастомеля, приехали через Ирпень, это наш путь, мы приехали в церковь, где нас просто приняли, как обычных людей, мы спали на полу, мы спали без одеял, мы просто на ночь переночевали и поехали дальше. Нам было бесконечно страшно, Каждую секунду, но мы выехали, вывезли семью с ребенком. Я просто прошу просто. помощи, то, что вы можете помочь, потому что сейчас э, у каждого человека в семье произошло что-то, что, что не, невозможно вернуть. И даже если в вашей семье ничего не произошло, то вы теперь на это смотрите. И вы не сможете теперь не увидеть то, что происходит в нашей стране. Никто на этой планете больше не сможет быть не связан с этим. Я мама сыновей. И сейчас мое обращение ко всем матерям России. Я хочу сказать одну вещь. Чужих детей не бывает. Убивают моих сыновей, убивают ваших сыновей. Одна мать, она не может сделать ничего. Но если вы откроете свои сердца матерей и выйдете все и поднимете руки, оденете на себя простыни, мы в состоянии как матери остановить эту войну. Как для тебя началась война? С чего? Как ты поняла, что в твою страну пришла война? Это началось 24 -го. Я проснулась в 6 утра от разговоров моей мамы и сестры. И потом начали летать по небу вот это все. Новости о том, что где-то бомбят, звуки взрыва и все такое. Подыши. И вы узнали, что они могут начать с области. Если тебе тяжело, мы можем не снимать. Нормально. Вот, и мы поехали к родителям на Салтовку, потому что ну, там спокойнее. Потом мы собрали вещи и решили уезжать из Харькова. Ну вот, там что-то случилось, и когда мы были уже за Киева, почему-то решили вернуться. 
Мы э, переспали ночь в Харькове, и на следующее утро нам во двор упала ракета. Дыши. Дыши, дыши, дыши. На меня смотри, дыши. Как ты сейчас себя чувствуешь? Нормально. Тебе сейчас безопасно? Да. Мамы, такие же, как твоя мамочка. Что бы ты им сказала, как ребенок? Я бы им сказала, что... Ну... Чтобы для них дети было это самое главное, чтобы ну, такого никогда, чтобы их дети никогда бы этого не увидели. Thank you so so much for watching till the end. Having spent one week in Ukraine and its borders with Poland and Hungary, I can safely say there's now a new horrific humanitarian crisis in Europe. And while one person alone cannot fix the problem, what we can do is come together and help make it smaller. There's a link on the top of the description down below to raise money for the British Red Cross, whose teams are currently on the ground doing life-changing work, helping as many people as they can. They're delivering food, water to hospitals, giving medicine to people, warm clothing to people that are cold, you know, their work, you know, really is life-changing. So please, if you watch this far, please consider donating. You know, I know it's cliche, but every dollar does make a difference. If you cannot support financially at this point, of course, there's no problem whatsoever. It's totally understandable. One way you can help though is by sharing this video with a friend or a colleague. The more people that watch this video, the better our chances are to help more people. Thanks so much for watching. Again, the link is gonna be on the top of the description and I will hopefully be seeing you soon, a Greek solo, signing out.